basic principle is it? لا يعبد إلا بما شرع. That's the principle we've been taught by our sheikhs, and which we transmit to our students and to the next generation. That we are we only make ibadah to Allah. What what is bajrur? لا يعبد. Allah is not worshipped except by what He has made Sharia. That's quite obviously the case because Allah is not going to lagum dinakum because today I perfected your religion. So the basic thing here is the basic principle we all have to agree upon is that the basic structures of worship in Islam has been established clearly. That was the whole reason why books of fiqh has been written to verify and re-verify century and generation one after the other whether salah is majroor, whether tarawih is majroor, sharia, whether fasting is majroor and so on and so forth. And we can be quite proud of the enormous amount of research that went into the fiqh and establishing the basic principles of worship. One of those basic principles of worship that we all accept, we must accept, is to make dua. But here you have to understand there's no need for you to make dua. No one orders you to make dua. Dua is of the ibadah mutlaqa. It is untethered. There's no reasons and there's no conditions. You can do it whenever you want to do it. In the morning, at night, if you walk, if you go and work, however, to make dua at the awqat in mustajabah is better, like after salah. Like when people are busy lining up for the sufuf, like after the adhan has gone off. Those are awqat mustajabah, ijab, which there is uh, the evidence that the Prophet said that making dua in those times are better than other times. If it comes to tawassul and istighad, what people must understand is that we are committed to the sharia and the deen of Allah, the deen of the Prophet, and the sunnah of the Prophet, because we are Shafi'iyya. Yes. And those are, those are the principles he established in his Risala. Quran and the sunnah and the ijma', the consensus and the qiyas. Mm -hmm. Those are the basis of our religion, of the condemned the bid'ah, which he specifically condemned the bid'ah of the kufar. Mm -hmm. And if you come to Hinduism, and, uh, they do their own thing. Because mm -hmm. they do their he was He was... Uh, Criticizing the non-Muslims, mm -hmm. uh, and he called that bid'ah. So he wants that not to happen with us. We must maintain our basic principles and not each one go his own way. Yeah. Like if you go to China, for example, every religion has their own rituals. Yes. They all call Confucianism. To be able to identify the religion and define it in India or China is virtually not possible mm -hmm. because of the enormous amounts of things, the cultural heritage there is massive and diverse. It appears the Prophet did want us to go the same way. Okay. That's Allah's knowledge and we accept the Ta'budi and the reasons why we don't fully understand. But the, the, the part of the Prophet had to be established, it was done, it was a sunnah, it was clearly written out there, re-established and established and verified and we really verified, clear, we can't go beyond that. That is the basic principle of Islam. So, we don't move without the Prophet saying yes or no. Yes. That they must understand. No Shaykh, no Imam. Not Mufti in the East of Islam, not Subhikyan Imam Suyuti, not al Aziz ibn Abdul Salam. But any of the great Bashayikh and ulama of the past move or say something is halal or jaiz unless there are clear and specific indications from the Quran and the Sunnah. But that's why we say our, our, our path is the little, mm -hmm. not madhab. I don't swing to something because such and such a person says so. Mm -hmm. It's very important. Not even Demia or Imam Ghazal, anybody. Now we follow it. No, we follow what is the need. Is they put forth this or not? And that has been the attitude of all our Mashaykh. That is why it is also our, our custom to read all the six books of Hadith Bukhari, Muslim, Tirimiri. <laughs> the Shafi'iyah were the leaders in this. Yes. Every single book is read. There's even our Ada, our custom to read the entire Bukhari mm -hmm. in the first 10 days of Ramadan. Yes. It is practice. Ten days. Which means you read Bukhari like the whole day. Yes, sir. Uh, like 20, 30, 40 students. The whole day, ten days. Like a baru, like a dhikr, like a will. You said like a will, the whole Bukhari like a will. So that custom people understand is based firmly on the hadith in the sunnah. There's no such thing we follow all the Quran and the sunnah. That's, that's actually not the, that's dalal if you don't. There can be dalal if you meet somebody else there. Because the four madhabs, the Shavi in particular, it's firmly and squarely based on the Quran and the Sunnah. So is there any evidence that you can do Tawassul? Indeed there is. 
In fact, it's so famous that we had our teachers in, in Zadrib, which are mainly Salafiyah, trying to comment and re-comment on that particular hadith in such a way which you can't understand the wasu from it. But it's almost clear, it's almost obvious that the Prophet said, um, uh, it's, uh, it's a hadith uh, narrated by Uthman, whenever the Sahaba of the Prophet, not, not the same yes, Uthman. And he said he was at a need by the third Khalifa of Islam, Saint Uthman. He said, by the, he said outside by the door he was blind, and uh, he felt that he was being excluded and marginalized. The Khalifa wouldn't come out. No one comes and talks to him. There's no secretary general or whatever who talks to him. And he sat there for hours and hours and hours. And somebody came along and said, why didn't you make the following dua? I had the Prophet teach him, make two rakats and ask, Oh Allah, I ask you, Bihaqi Muhammad. I ask you, through the right of Muhammad that he has over me, in the sense that I have to follow him. Yes. Not the Prophet himself, but by the haq of the Prophet. That's also something they need to understand. The wasl is not by the person himself. The wasl uh, is, really, is really by the maqam of the person. Yes. Um, and he said he made the dua. The dua is in Tirmidhi, by the way. Sahih mm -hmm. The entire hadith is in there. And the dua is in there. And it's recommended, by the way, to do it if you have a hajjah important need, which clearly indicates that the Prophet himself taught the Sahaba and was narrated down from one Sahaba to the other Sahabi that a, a dua at its most is to ask Allah through the Prophet. Mm -hmm. Not as an intermediary, but to ask Allah. The dua is for Allah. Oh Allah, I ask you to give me this and this. But I ask you because I'm following the Prophet. Does that mean anything? Doesn't that give weight to the, to, the, to the dua? And I am a follower of Muhammad, Ya Allah. Yes. I follow Muhammad, isn't there something in there that can make this dua be acceptable, more acceptable to you? That kind of dua has been accepted by the ulama and the imam of the mashayikh, as long as we can remember. If this is the wasul, that is in fact mashru'ah, but there's no need to do it. It is considered to be only a kind or type of dua. Okay. My dua is usually at home. Dua in the times of, in which it's mustajab to make dua. After salah and at home, after we eat, after we break our fast and so yes. on. That's when we make dua to Allah. Okay. But the wasul is one of the types of dua. Mm -hmm. Not necessary. But you must. If you can, you can. If you don't want to, don't do it. That's the important thing to understand. It's one of the forms.